back again. I'm sorry I couldn't come yesterday. I was busy with the uh, more urgent things. And tomorrow I'm busy as well. But uh, Erga Netz will replace me and she will be talking with a very interesting guy. She will be talking with uh, Ira Dvir. He's a reader and a critic and it, it's going to be a fascinating conversation I heard. He has a lot to say about uh, uh, my uh, book. And actually that's why I'm here because of my book. You saw the beautiful cover, Oh Gulliver. Um, it says it is written by Erga Netz. It's, it's okay with me that she took all the credit, but actually it is my book, Mrs. Gulliver. I am Mrs. Gulliver. I was uh, married to the famous traveler Lemuel Gulliver. And um, I wrote actually his uh, memoir. It is a very uh, well-kept secret until now. Now everybody will know that I actually wrote this book. And in the book, I'm telling exactly how it came about. But uh, my um, Lemuel Gulliver went to many, many strange uh, troubles. And uh, in this book, O oh, Gulliver, I'm telling about the first travel, the travel to Lilliput, where people were one twelfth the size of our world. And Lemuel was stranded there for a few years until he had to run away to save his life. He had amazing adventures there. He met amazing people. Today I'm going to read to you from uh, my book about uh, one of his encounters with the lovers. But first, <coughs> I want, excuse me, I'm so excited. Uh, I wanted to uh, 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 tell you about the book a little bit more because I wrote it 300 years ago and I hid it because what I wrote was not uh, uh, legal at the time, so I made sure nobody will ever find it. But luckily, a very short time ago, a professor of English studies in England found it, of course, England, and uh, she studies also women's um, uh, gender studies. And she found the manuscript. And immediately she saw the treasure that it was because it told so much, not only about our lives and uh, the life of, excuse me, and the life of, uh, uh, I'm so sorry. <clears throat> That's so very undecent of me. <laughs> She, uh, she read, I, I wrote there about life in England in my time, 17th, 18th century, and also about life in Lilliput, which is a different world, but so similar to, to ours. And um, so she decided that it's important to bring this book to the world. I agree with her by now. I think everything that I wrote should be very important to read and much fun also, because I wrote about Lemuel's adventures. He told me all his relationship. And at night when I was lonely and I was missing him, I wrote down what he told me about these uh, relationships. I will read to you a little bit now. So uh, she wanted to publish it, but she didn't want to do it on her own name, but I, I'm not going to tell you her name. But she did find another woman by the name of Erga Netz. That's the name of the cover of the book that you saw. And um, she, uh, Erga Netz agreed to bring it to publication. So uh, the professor and Erga wrote uh, uh, end notes and they tell a lot, they explain a lot about things that for me were uh, obvious. I didn't need to explain them, but they understood that 300 years on people might not understand everything that I wrote then. So they wrote uh, footnotes that explain a lot uh, about life uh, in that time and things like that. And um, uh, the book is coming out by uh, the beautiful Tough Press, Tough Poets Press. And uh, there is now, you know, a Kickstarter going on. And I want to show you because I'm so excited about it because you know, um, it's another week. You have one more week to order your book, but um, um, but it is already um, nearly nearly uh, nearly covered. 
So um, I want to show you, let me see. Yes, I can show you here. Let me show you all of it actually uh, here. Do you see? You don't really see here. Maybe you will see it now better. Yeah, yeah, so you can see how amazing it is that um, uh, uh, Rick, the publisher, uh, told me that he needs to uh, sell enough books for the amount of $2,664, we had pounds at my time. And so far, I see that 70 readers, future readers, uh, pledged $2,655. So we only missed $9. If you want to buy half a book, I'm not sure it's possible. The book only costs $18. So what the heck? Pay $18. You will read the book. You will enjoy it so much. And I'm so happy for this uh, uh, success of, of, uh, of the book. And uh, I'm, I'm so grateful to all the pledges and the future readers. I'm sure you will enjoy it so very much. So th this is the first credit. The f so first, the thank you was for Rick Schrober from Tough Poets Press. And then I wanted to tell you that the, the book, the photo on the book cover, um, which looks very much like me, but uh, it is not exactly me. This was done by Ole Stein Hansen, a very talented photo Danish photographer from Denmark. And then uh, the dress that I'm wearing, look at it, isn't it gorgeous, except that it shows me bra, excuse me. This dress was done by the fantastic costume theater costume designer by the name of Helen Butniatsky. She did that. And the, the makeup teacher, you see how beautiful I made up. I'm getting better every day because I only learned it from the wonderful teacher and makeup artist, Franz Hyman. She taught me how to do it and I'm doing it myself. I think I'm getting pretty good at it. Yeah. And then there is music. You heard the clip at the beginning of this uh, broadcast, of this sending. And this music was done by Shabtai Bonfil, the amazing musician, and he's also singing there. And in a few days, there would be another version of the song. And I don't tell you about it yet. It will be a surprise. So now I uh, wanted to read uh, to you from one of the chapters. This is my manuscript I'm reading straight to, uh, for my manuscript. My book, you saw, looks different. I want to read to you about how come uh, Lemuel got to know the Lilliputian lovers. And it's not what you think, you, but you will uh, hear all about it in a minute. <clears throat> Quinbus Flestrin, that means Man Mountain in Lilliputian, by the way. Quinbus Flestrin, General Reldresal, said, Our most highly emperor of Lilliput, the delight and terror of the universe, etc., etc., wishes me to speak with you as a friend. To which my Lemuel gave his humble thanks and appreciation. This, by the way, Lemuel didn't print it. So. I wrote it uh, secretly at night. General Reldersal continues, the emperor knows full well how difficult it must be for you away from your home and family, to which my Lemuel shed a tear, which the uh, general was quick to wipe off his bald bird head. To our country, in our country, we use the services of lovers for men who are without a family or away on the road, seeing as we do that your needs and abilities are far greater than ours, the emperor will provide you with six lovers tonight. At first, Lemuel tried to convince the general that the mere idea was preposterous, but to no avail. General Reldresal 
just thought my Lemuel approved, and uh, laughingly, he jumped on his horse and galloped away. As night fell and it became dark, Lemuel realized that he had no place to hide. Still chained in his prison temple, all he could do was hope that the lovers will not be hurt emotionally when he will reject them or physically when he won't succeed. As nothing happened and nobody came, he decided to go to sleep, hoping that the general came to his senses after all. Lying on his uh, coarse bed, fast asleep, he was suddenly woken up by soft whispers in his ear. Queen Bus Flestrin, who grow festo, meaning man mountain, you are really great. And they continued in soft Lilliputian, you are worthy of love, we all love you. He opened his eyes, but in the pitch dark couldn't see anybody. As the sweet voices persisted, he could make out that there were six of them whispering somewhere nearby. Where are you? He whispered back. Let me see you. At that, he heard some giggles and uh, immediately the six little lamps were lit. In this dim light, he saw six Lilliputian women of various ages from 20 to 60 and uh, various sizes from five to seven inches dressed somberly in black sitting on little stools near his head. What is it, he gasped. What are you doing here? We are your lovers, answered the one who seemed to be the oldest and most respected. The general sent uh, for us to love and comfort you. It's all paid for in advance by the emperor, don't worry, added another one. So what is it that you do? Asked Lemuel, somewhat amused. We tell you that we love you, of course, they all said, bursting into laughter. Everybody knows that. Well, <clears throat> I'm from another place, as you can tell, said Lemuel. Please excuse my ignorance. Upon which they proceeded to explain to him <clears throat> that uh, the Lilliputian men are prone to be lonesome when they travel away from home. And even when at home, if their spouses don't show them enough love, which is why somewhere in the long lost past, a profession has, uh, has evolved of lovers, women whose occupation it was to give men love, affection, and when needed, admiration. And what about sex? Asked Lemuel, bewildered. Oh, sex, said the lovers, this. Each man in, in, is bound by his holy Brundrakal, that's the Lilliputian Bible, by the uh, holy Brundrakal and the holy matrimony contract to give his wife at least four times a week. Oh, said Lemuel, and if not, he's executed, of course, said the lovers, as a matter of fact, to Lemuel's terrified amazement. So, well, okay, how do you go about your work as lovers, asked Lemuel. And the tiny women resumed to whisper loving, comforting, encouraging words in his ear, until Lemuel couldn't take it anymore and he burst into tears. As they were whispering gently, he couldn't help thinking about his poor dear mother who never had time to hug or caress him, about the childhood, his childhood sweetheart who died in the plague, even about our children and me. And he felt that he was missing it all oh so bitterly and as the professional warm voices played in his ears, he was overcome by his emotions and crying, crying bitterly. He was suddenly aware that he was all alone. 
the lovers were just closing the gate behind them. The last one waving goodbye in, in, in a strange and inexplicable way, Lemuel did feel much better. But, but wait a minute, he called out and was much relieved to see the gate open again. We were only paid for one session, apologized the eldest lover. But the general will surely pay us tomorrow more when we tell him, then should the youngest. Oh, well, said the oldest, let's go back to him. But when they set themselves again on their little stools and resumed their, we love you, Lemuel stopped them sharply. We were talking before about sex, he said. What do the married men do in this province? Sorry, what do unmarried men do in this province? They get married, of course, said the oldest. Or they are hired by married men who cannot fulfill all their matrimonial duties to have sex with their wives, of course, added the youngest. And if a woman wants to have sex more than five times a week, then should Lemuel cautiously? It's always a problem, sighed the lovers and exchanged glances with each other. In fact, said the oldest, many women among us are petitioning the emperor to make the law five times a week. But it's very difficult. The rumor goes that the, the emperor, who is also the highest priest, he himself can't fulfill his obligations and he secretly hires men to take care of the empress. And many a time she pays for extra with her own money too. While we, the poor lovers, we, the poor lover women cannot afford it at all. Could I be of any help? asked Lemuel hopefully. Oh, so sorry, cried the lovers as one. We couldn't possibly afford you. Why not? Lemuel's heart sank. You're too big, much too big for us. We pay according to size, you see. Oh, that, said Lemuel. What if I don't ask that you pay me? We could always exchange loving and sex, reasoned the youngest with the others. And so the business was concluded. Though Lemuel knew full well he could do without their loving and his crying, yet he was much intrigued to have sex with them. Are you intrigued too? You will read it in the book. So go ahead, in the comments, you can uh, see the link where you can order your book. You can still do it this week. It's another seven days, tomorrow another six days only, that you can get your own copy of O Gulliver, and you can read all the secrets of Mrs. Gulliver and much more. Well, tomorrow, I won't be here, I'm sorry, I will be busy, but Erganetz will be here with a reader and a critic, Ira Dvir, and I think they will have a very fascinating conversation about uh, my book. So I will uh, see you in a couple of days again. Love you all. Thank you so much for being here.